in one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. When autumn came to the papery forest, the weather turned gloomy and the sun almost disappeared from the sky. It made our friends feel very melancholy. You know, Knock, it seems like the weather is not so wonderful anymore. I know, Ari. Who could enjoy all this dullness behind the window? Maybe those who really like the color gray. But Aristotle and Knock Knock were fond of bright colors and high spirits much more. That's why they had no intention to stay home and feel down. What do you think, Knock? What's the main reason for all of this bad weather? Ari, doesn't it seem like something is missing? That's right. The sun is missing. And we're gonna fix it right now. But how in the world are you going to fix it? A paperific idea had occurred to Aristotle. Since the real sun is hiding, they can plant the meadow with sunflowers, which, as it's commonly known, resemble little suns. Hurry! For some reason, our little suns don't seem very willing to come out. I got it, Nock. They also miss the real sun. That's why they're growing so slowly. And the weather's not getting any better. What do we do now? We need to think it over paperfully. Let's go for a walk. It's known that nothing provokes good thoughts better than a good walk with a friend in the open air. Soon, the friend saw a big, thundery cloud. Look, Knock. This is the reason why the sun can't shine brightly. If we can get rid of the cloud, then the weather would be great again. That would be paperific. I propose we suck the cloud up with a vacuum cleaner. What a paperific idea. I'm gonna go back and get one. But either the hose was too short or the vacuum cleaner didn't have enough power, but the cloud did not even move. I feel a little tired right now, Knock. Let's rest a little. At home. And then we can go on fixing the weather. Agreed. And so the friends headed back home. To lift their spirits a bit, Ari and Knock sat down to look at their summer photos. Knock, take a look. Here's the solution to our problem. I do keep looking, but I can only see our summer photos. Knock Knock looked at the album one more time, but found nothing new there. Look, Knock, when there's too much sun, we need sunglasses. But when there's not enough sun, we need some bad weather glasses. What a paperific idea, Ari. Let's make up some glasses fast. Let's fold a sheet of thick paper in half and draw a circle so that part of the circle is beyond the fold. That's right. Now, let's draw a smaller circle inside the big one. Cut out the glasses. Superb! Roll the paper around a pencil and fix it with adhesive tape. Take out the pencil and make small earpieces. Now, decorate the glasses any way you want. The good mood glasses are ready. When looking through these glasses, all weather seems like the best weather. Well, of course, Knock, because these are good weather and great mood glasses. And this is how our story paperfully ended. Aristotle and Knock Knock were not able to change autumn with its cloudy weather, but thanks to the good mood glasses, it didn't look downhearted to them anymore. 
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. One fine paperful morning, our friends received a very strange letter. Hmm, look at this, Knock. What a marvelous letter. Who sent it, Ari? It seems that the return address is the dark paper land, but I'm still not sure. The letter is all torn and has holes in it, and it's awful handwriting. Ari, let me check it out. I'm a true expert in awful handwritings. My aunt is a hen. You should see her scratch. Hmm, hmm. It's clear as mud. Maybe this is not a letter, but a picture? We can hang it on the wall. Let's ask the postman who gave it to him. And the friends broke into a run to catch the postman who luckily hadn't flown too far away. The postman told them that indeed he brought the letter from the distant dark paperland, and it was written by a moose whose name was Tam Tam, an old acquaintance of Aristotle and Knock Knock. Tam Tam had intentionally learned the paper language to get in touch with his friends and write letters to them. Tam Tam had a paper and a pencil, but it's too bad. In the faraway dark paper land, they have no stones or tree stubs, nothing like that to put a paper on and write over it. So Tam Tam had put it right in the sand, and we saw what it came to look like. Oh, poor Tam Tam. He's so bad at writing, and we can't even read it. What if we send him a piece of fence? I've heard that some write on fences. No, Knock. To send a fence is not so paperific. We'll make up a table and chairs for Tam Tam. Well, I'd rather build up a couch for him. I love couches. I'm a woodpecker after all. The friends set to work so hard that chips scattered away. Or more specifically, not chips, but paper cuts. But when the friends were through with manufacturing the furniture, they faced an unexpected problem. That's right. Go ahead. Um, move up. Hmm. That's way too big and heavy. Knock, our furniture won't take to the air. So we'll never know what Tam Tam wanted to say to us. Oh, this will be the most mysterious mystery and secret secret of all the secrets. But what if it was something very, very important? Like the million dollar question of life. Or maybe he needs our help. I'll have to think this through in a paperful way. What is there to think about? We gotta take it on. Quick and paperfully. If only we could send our furniture somehow in a small letter. Well, in fact, we can, Knock. What? How can we send the furniture in an envelope? A piece of cake. We'll make up fold flat furniture. Hooray! Oh, how paperful. Take a piece of paper and fold it in two. Now, cut two lines and open the sheet and draw inwards the part that's been cut. You've got a stable and solid table now. Then, you can cut smaller lines nearby, and you'll have a chair. Or, to be more precise, a stool. Unbend the sheet and cut out a window to admire your paper scenery through it. You can make the furniture more complicated, like cutting out new legs or the back of a chair. But the most paperful thing of all is you can always fold up the furniture, put it in an envelope, and make a pop-up postcard. A stamp! Hurry, we forgot to put a stamp on it! So this story, too, folded up very paperfully. Aristotle and Knock Knock sent the folded flat furniture they made to Tam Tam, and he was at last able to thank them in his response. It appeared that in his first letter, he had asked them to mail him some piece of furniture so he could write letters on it. Though Knock Knock is still sure that Tam Tam had sent them the picture, not the letter. It's all because of Tam Tam's handwriting which is a little too artistic. See you next paper time.
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. Despite that the paper hot summer was at its height, Knock on that day was busy up to his ears. He was getting prepared for an important examination. Okay, which insect is this? Bark beetleus gluttonous. Right, Knock. Good job. Now we are. Uh, now we are. Now we are. White mouth is papers. That's it. Don't worry, you're gonna pass this exam without a hitch. The matter was that Knock, as every paper woodpecker should, was going to become a forest first aider. And to become one, he needed to know all about insects from top to toe. Well, of course I'll pass my exam, because I'll be wearing my lucky cap. Let me ask you, what's so special about the cap? Well, this is my grandfather's cap. He was a first aider and wanted me to defend the paper forest from enemy insects, too. Knock! This is my lucky cap. I have been a first aider for a long time. And I want you to defend the forest from enemy insects, too. This is very paperful. But why is the cap lucky? Well, of course it's lucky. It brings luck to everyone. So with it, I won't be scared by any exam. You think so? Is the issue really about the cap? Hey! Wait! Knock almost caught his cap once or twice, but in the nick of time, the paper wind snatched it from under his beak. Knock was out of his strength, and what was even worse was he had lost the very heart to take up this paper chase. Oh, the game is up! Now I'll never pass the exam! Knock, you don't need the cap to become a forest first aider because you're already ready for the exam. You are an architect of your own fortune. I mean, a first aider of your forest. Or all I'm saying, Knock, is that Knock. Ari didn't know what to do because it's a very difficult thing, bringing back self-belief to your friend. It was time to think paperfully. A few minutes later, Ari stood right outside the door of his friend's room. Knock, I brought you something very special. Thanks, Ari. Just put it on the table. Maybe you should do it yourself. My lucky cap! Oh, Ari, you're the best friend in the world! Okay, okay. Well, you have to go now. Just like Ari had assumed. Knock answered each and every exam question splendidly. So Professor Eagle Owl presented the Forest First Aider Diploma to him. I'd like to express my most paperful gratitude to my granddad, to my friend Ari, and my lucky cap. I wouldn't get this diploma if you hadn't been there. A happy knock went home, and Aristotle was there waiting for him patiently. Look, my Forest First Aider Diploma! Congratulations, Knock. I always believed in you. Well, in this lucky cap of yours, too. Oh, come on, Ari. I know the truth. This isn't my cap. Wait, how did you guess? Oh, very simple. I found mine on my way back home. Knock was right. Ari made the paper cap himself in order to help his friend believe in himself. Let's make a paper cap. First, fold a square piece of paper in two, and then in two again. Now, make a small fold at the bottom. Bend the halves toward the center and unbend the corners. One more small fold, and the cap is ready. Oh, yes, one more thing. A red cross is missing. That's it. Now it's ready for sure. Each of the friends now had their own cap, and Nock would always wear his whenever he was up to defend the forest from enemy insects. However, they instantly forgot which one of them was lucky and which was just paper. But it wasn't so important after all. The most important part of this story is that it too folded up very paperfully. See you next paper time.
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. One day, our friends took to the sea to go fishing. Sorry, the fish aren't biting. Not for me either. Look, there's some island over there. Why don't we go over that way and see if the fish are biting? How strange, Knock. I don't remember this island being there before. Look, Ari, plenty of fish are here. The whole sea of fish! Knock Knock was right. There were so many fish that the friends had hardly enough time to put bait on their fishing rods. This is what I call a fishy spot. You know, Knock, I'm feeling a bit drowsy. I feel like taking a nap. Sure, Ari. We have broken a sweat. And now let's have a paper full rest. Hurry! What is it? It's very strange, Knock. It's only ice and snow around us. Seems like winter has come. Could we have slept for so long? Hurry! I'll fly and scout around where our boat is. Okay, Knock. Unbelievable! We slept the whole summer and the whole autumn and New Year's Day. Oh, I didn't wish Aristotle a happy New Year. Oops! Oh, wrong way! How could it be? Oh, which way to fly? Knock Knock was lost amongst the gigantic icebergs, but he kept up his courage and made up his mind to ask anyone with a heartbeat how to find his way. Excuse me, I'm kind of lost here. Do you know a small island around here offhand? It's almost as big as yours. <laughs> and there's a moose standing on it too, but not white like you, but a blue one. Knock, <laughs> it's me, Aristotle. Wow, Hari. Oh, it's so great to see you. We have to do something before we're frozen into ice. Can you think of something warming? I'll try. How many fish? Will fish help us, Ari? No. Although, wait a second. Yes, fish are the answer. Fish is the answer? Now I understand, Nock how we got here. You see, we're not on an island at all. If it's not an island, then what is it? Knock, open your eyes. This is Wang Doodle, a whale. But it was not an island. It was instead a whale. It had looked over the fact that our friends settled on its back and swam together with them far off northwards. How to make a paper whale. Pick up a sheet of paper, fold it from corner to corner, and straighten the back. Now, bend one of the corners to make it parallel to the center line. Unbend half of the bent corner back. Do the same with the other half. Now, crease the whale's nose and fold the sheet in two. To make the tail, bend this corner. And your whale is ready. With Aristotle and Knock Knock settled on his broad back, the whale took them back home. Ari, I didn't understand one thing. Did we outsleep the summer or not? No, Knock. We just slept for two hours. And meanwhile, the whale took us far away north. Aha! Uh -huh. I see now. But still, I wish you a happy new year. Just in case. Thus, this story folded up in quite a paperful way. See you next paper time. 
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. One paperful summer day, the friends went away to Paper Lake to sunbathe a while and swim in its refreshing, inky water. Ari, do we really need all of this? I thought we just wanted to do some swimming. My dear Knock, you never can tell what kind of story will unfold for us. So we have to be ready for anything. You might have noticed that Aristotle was always prudent, so Nock humbly agreed to carry all their belongings to the lake. On the Paper Lake shore, the friends took to their favorite pastimes. Knock Knock, for example, loved to rest in the shade, and Aristotle the moose headed to the water to enjoy its inky freshness. Knock! Run! I mean, fly over here quick! Knock, doesn't anything look strange to you? Ari! I think something's wrong with your feet! No, Knock. Everything's fine with my feet, but something's wrong with the water itself. We need to find out what's happened as soon as possible. Such an extraordinary incident left the friends curious, so they scurried to find out the truth as fast as they could. Aristotle and Knock Knock were so surprised. Never before had the underwater world looked so fantastic. It was all painted in the most unexpected colors. My friend, I think I'm beginning to realize something. This way, follow me. Good afternoon. Mr. Octopus, would you mind telling us what exactly you're doing here? The octopus stopped waving his brushes and told the friends that he painted pictures as he's a famous underwater artist. At least, he thought of himself as one. My friend Nock and I are true paint lovers, but we think it's not too practical painting on everything you've got under your arms. But Ari, look at how good he is at it. We can't stop him from doing so. He's an awfully talented octopus. I have to think it over paperfully. Aristotle and Nock felt a deep respect for pictorial art and creative octopuses, and that made Ari come up with a paperific plan. A real artist doesn't need to paint on everyone and everything around him. A real artist should use a drawing easel. A paperific idea, Ari. We need an easel. Let's take a sheet of paper and roll pipes of different length from it. Now, let's take the longest pipe and bend it in two to get the easel's legs. Now, let's take the three shorter pipes and glue cross beams on them. Amazing. Glue one more pipe on the bottom crossbeam to support the painting. Very good. Now, glue the third leg to the easel and paint it. The easel is ready. The octopus stopped flinging his brushes and painting on whatever he had and began to behave much more mannerly. You know, Nock, today I think we made a contribution to the wonderful world of art. To true art, Ari. To paperful art, my friend. The painting that the octopus presented to Nock and Aristotle took a place of honor in their living room. And this story took its place of honor in the collection of our other stories because something very paperful happens in Paperland every day. See you next Paper Time.
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. It just so happens that fall comes to the paper forest too, and it brings rain and makes leaves fall off the paper forest trees, just like everywhere else. Oh, Hari, this is so sad, but it seems like the fall is finally here. Of course, my friend, because fall always comes after summer, and you can't do anything to change that. Aristotle and Knock Knock were feeling upset that the fall stripped the paper forest of all its colors. The forest fell off and became gray and dull. Knock, what if we painted the forest with watercolors? Then it would stay bright and beautiful all the way until summer. A paperific idea, Ari. Let's go get the watercolors. The friends got to painting over the forest with great pleasure because they wanted to keep it from looking so mournful. Ari, I guess we managed to outsmart the fall. Well, I'd have to agree with you, my friend. But Aristotle's idea turned out to be not so paperific, and the friends walked home in silence. Look, Ari! To this little fur, the fall, the rains, and the wind are child's play! Sure thing, Knock, because this is a fir tree, and they are evergreen trees. Knock, how didn't we guess this right away? We just need to plant more trees like the fir tree in the forest. Hooray! How paperful! Green all year round! <laughs> okay, Knock. Well, to plant something, we need the seeds. And where do we get these seeds from? So the friends decided to find out where to get the seeds from. Well, based on my investigation, partner, I can say that the seeds are always on the inside. So that means fir tree seeds are also inside. Well, I can tap the trunk and they'll fall out. Oops, Knock, I think I've got a cone swelling. Yup, Ari, you sure do. It's a cone for sure, a fur cone. You have no idea how right you are, my friend. A fur cone exactly, that's the answer. So that's where the fur seeds are concealed, in cones. It all turned out as simple as a piece of paper. Hooray! Here are the things we'll need. Colored paper, scissors, glue, and a wooden stick. First off, cut out two pieces of paper resembling pine cones. Now, cut out small squares and roll them into cones. Now glue them together. Glue the cones onto the work pieces with the bottom facing upwards. Now, let's glue the two work pieces together. Cut the green paper in the form of long strips to make a twig. Now let's make a fringe. Wrap the fringe strips around the stick and glue it on to make sure it's secure. Then fix it to the cone. Your cone is finally ready. That's green-tastic, Knock. Green-tastic, Ari. When fall and winter come, even in paperland, very few joyful colors remain. But thanks to the green firs planted by Aristotle and Knock Knock, it got a little happier for the paper forest inhabitants to live through this not so colorful time of year. See you next paper time.
particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. One bright sunny morning, the friends were working out when suddenly an unexpected guest dropped in. An unexpected lady guest, one, to be more exact. Three, four, one, two, three. Oh, Knock! She must be looking for you. Mm, nope! This is the first time I've seen this chicken. I'm sorry, are you looking for somebody? The unexpected guest's name was Chicken Molly. She told our friends that she had gone for a walk and got lost, and she'd give this whole sack of grain to anyone who would help her find her way home. Don't you worry, Molly. We'll take you home without any reward at all. Sorry, this is the first time we've ever seen this chicken. How are you going to find out her address? Let's get going and I'll explain everything on the way. All is pay perfectly simple. It turns out there was a hole inside of Molly's grain bag. And everywhere she walked, a trail was left behind. So they followed the grain trail. They walked out to the edge of the forest where Chicken Molly's house stood. Or, in other words, a chicken coop. Well, here is where the grain trail ends, and that means... It means, Molly, we've found your way home! Hooray! Phew! She didn't even say thank you! Well, good deeds are to be done for sincerity's sake, without expecting any gratitude. Happy that Chicken Molly had found her way home, the friends headed back to their own home. But the chicken was there waiting for them again. Hi, Molly! Chicken Molly was surprised. How come Knock knew her name? She told them that she went for a walk, lost her way, and she'd give a whole sack of grain to anyone who would help her find her way home. Knock, knock. I should have realized it right away. Chickens have a very short memory, and they forget everything right away. We have to walk the poor thing home again. It was true. The birdie didn't remember Ari, or Knock, or the fact that she'd lost her way already not so long ago. Here you are, Molly. We found your home. I mean, Coop, again. Ari, I was just thinking, what if Molly forgets her way home again? Then what do we do? Hmm, she won't anymore. Ari gave the absent-minded chicken a piece of paper with her address written on it. However, it didn't help with Molly's obliviousness. After they returned home, the friends met the chicken there again. Molly, where's the note with the address I gave to you? It seemed that Molly had forgotten what she would need the piece of paper for and had simply thrown it away. Molly, you live on the edge of the forest, in coop number one. So here's another note with your address on it. Sorry, what if Molly throws the note away again and then gets lost in the forest? You're right, Knock. Seems like it's time to think paperfully. No time to think, Ari. It's time to act. Paperfully. Knock Knock had caught up to the forgetful Molly, who luckily had not lost her way yet. And meanwhile, Aristotle took up his precious double bass that helped him concentrate so much. I got it. We'll write her address down on a boomerang. Hooray! A paperific idea! Take a piece of cardboard and draw on it three blades. Make sure all the blades are equal. Now, let's cut out our boomerang, bend it along the edges like this, and that's it. The boomerang is ready. If you try to throw it, it'll definitely come back. Aristotle wrote the address down on the boomerang and presented it to the forgetful Molly. You see, Molly, a boomerang will always return to the one who threw it. So now, the address written on this note will always be with you. Oh, how paperific! Now, Molly, you'll always know exactly where your home is. Now, the friends were able to stop worrying. Chicken Molly found her way home and they found their order and tranquility. And that means our story folded up very paperfully. See you next paper time.
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. One utterly common afternoon, a completely uncommon but long-awaited guest popped by to the friend's living room. Ari, I'm so excited because today, from the far away paper Africa, our friend Mumba is coming to see us. Oh, what a delightful event, Knock Knock. We have to be warm, welcoming hosts, as is customary in Paperland. The friends were so excited with the upcoming guest because Mumba had been traveling from Paper Africa itself, which is on the other side of the Earth. Hello, Mumba! Welcome, welcome, dear friend. Welcome to our paper forest. And though Aristotle and Knock Knock offered to Mumba the finest refreshments available in the paper forest, their guest, from the far away paper Africa, had shown no interest for it. I don't know, Ari. I think maybe we're not so hospitable. It's obvious that our guest is not enjoying the treats we put out for him. Here, Mumba readily reassured the friends that he was very pleased with their reception, but confessed that in Paper Africa, they prefer very different dainties. And to bolster up his friends, he offered them a taste of the bananas he brought. As you know, paper mooses are not experts in exotic fruits, but my intuition suggests that something is amiss. Well, paper woodpeckers aren't experts either, Ari. But I have to agree with you. But because of Mumba's long journey, the bananas had gone bad, which made the guest very upset, as he wanted to treat Aristotle and Knock Knock so badly. It's not an easy situation, Ari. Bananas don't grow around here in our paper forest. Of course, Knock. They only grow in paper Africa. But if we try to bring them from there, they will certainly go bad again. Mumba told them that the most paperlicious bananas are those taken right from the tree. But unfortunately, throughout the whole paper forest, there was not a single, however small, banana palm tree. A paperific idea has just occurred to me. Now, I would say we should go to sleep, and in the morning, we will find a solution to our problem. Mumba and Nock listened to Aristotle's advice. The more so, it was quite late, and all well-brought-up woodpeckers and mooses were supposed to be sleeping by now. The next morning, Nock and Mumba woke up and came outside. I don't get it. We fell asleep in the paper forest, but now we've woken up in paper Africa. Of course not, Knock. It's as easy as a piece of paper. So, while you were asleep, I gave a call to our friends in paper Africa, and I asked them to plant a banana palm tree, not with the head up, but rather with the head down. Aha! Uh -huh. I see now. Since that land lies on the opposite part of the Earth from us, the palm tree must have grown through the Earth and appeared here in our paper forest. All correct, my friend. Hooray! How paperful! Cut short slits on a brown strip of paper. Fold a green piece of paper into the form of bellows and cut half round leaves out of it. That's right. Now, glue the leaves onto the brown paper and fold it into a trunk with the use of a pencil. Glue it together, and your palm tree is ready. Sometimes, thanks to imagination and resourcefulness, you can succeed in doing something that at one point seemed unachievable, especially if you have paperfully thought it out before. See you next paper time. 
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. One summer morning, the friends set forth to see Knock Knock's granddad, because granddad was having a birthday. And you should know that Knock Knock loved his granddad very much. Knock, for the journey, I think we'll need a map. Got it! Postcard sandwiches. Check, Ari! Scissors and glue, just to be paid perfectly safe. Yep! The present for your grandpa. Oh, the present for grandpa is the most important thing! Your grandpa lives by the paper mill, so I expect we'll be there by lunchtime. Ari cut the rope, and the air balloon smoothly soared above Paperland. The traveling was going very postcardly. It's the perfect weather to take a trip. Soft breeze, sun, and the birds are soaring. Not only the birds, Ari! Knock, it's a tornado! Knock, let go of the fishing rod, or we're gonna crash! But we can't leave my grandpa without a present! It's better to leave him without a present than without his beloved grandson! Keep your beak up, Knock. We're alive, and that's the most important. And by the way, we're still on schedule. By my estimations, we should see the paper mill in three, two, one. Ari, there's no windmill whatsoever. That's strange. And no grandpa either. We're going in the wrong direction. That is not paperful. We should land quickly. Knock was right. The balloon was carried the other way around by the tornado. That is, to the freezing sea. Oh, what should we do, Ari? Now we really won't be on time to wish Grandpa a happy birthday. Don't lose heart, Knock. The wind may still change. Well, what if it changes in the wrong direction? What if we're carried away further into the freezing sea? It's time to think it over paperfully. Knock, I think I got it. We'll make up a weather vane from the paper cup. It'll rotate in the same direction the wind is blowing. And then we'll be able to know which direction to go. Hooray! How paperful! Now we'll make it to Grandpa's birthday in time! In order to make a weather vane, we'll need a simple paper cup a wooden stick, and some red paper. Thicken two sections of the stick with some adhesive tape. Now, cut strips from the red paper and glue them on the cup. Then, cut off the cup's bottom and fix the cup onto the stick so that it can still rotate easily in any direction. Amazing! Our weather vane is ready. Soon, the cup turned to the right direction, which meant that the wind changed its direction at last. Now, it was time to hit the road. The friends reached Knox's granddad's house without incident. Granddad was overjoyed to see his beloved grandson, and Knox was happy to be on time. However, something was still bothering him. Grandpa, I had prepared such a wonderful present for you. But it's, it's, it's... It's with me. Knock, go ahead and wish your grandpa a happy birthday. Come on. It was a splendid happy birthday. Granddad was very pleased with the present. And of course, with his grandson. And that is how this story folded up in such a paperful way. See you next paper time. 
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. Once upon a time, Aristotle read a very interesting paper book. You know, Knock, I like this book so much that I think I want to try something similar. Ari, what is this book you're talking so much about? Well, the book is called Around the World in 80 Days. Hmm, I've never heard of it before. Aristotle told Nock that this was an adventurous story about travelers who managed to make the journey around the Earth in just 80 days. So, my friend, you and I will start traveling around the paper forest, but only spend one day on it. But Ari, that's impossible. We can't make such a long journey in such a short period of time. You're mistaken, my friend. You just need to be well prepared for the journey. I still say that this is impossible. Well, Nock, I suggest we solve our argument experimentally. Let's start a journey around the paper forest and be home by the evening tea time. What do you say? Knock Knock was preparing for the journey the whole morning. Well, it looks to me, Ari, like you're not ready for our journey at all. Oh, I've been ready for a while, Knock Knock. I'm sure that for this journey, an umbrella is all that we would possibly need. An umbrella? This is what you call being well prepared for traveling? Absolutely, Knock Knock. This is exactly what I call getting well prepared for traveling. Pay perfectly prepared. How to make a paper umbrella. Cut a circle out of a piece of paper and mark the center of it. Fold the circle in two and then fold it in two again to make the crease go through the center over and over again. That's it. Now, spread the sheet out. Make bellows from the other folds taking turns, one inwards and one outwards. Now, take a toothpick and pierce the umbrella with it through the center. Secure it with glue, and your umbrella is ready to go. And so the friends hit the road. It turned out that Aristotle's umbrella came in handy, and the friends readily sheltered underneath it from the downpour. It seems that our journey is becoming a seafaring one. You're right, Ari. The water's rising higher and higher. My friend, I invite you to join my cruising and take a look over the loveliness of the paper forest. Suddenly, a strong wind arose. Ari, with that wind, we won't be able to steer this umbrella at all. Nock and Ari were pretty far from their home by now, and they had to take a paperful thought on how to get back. Nock, a paperific idea just occurred to me. What holds us back will help move us forward, and soon we'll be back home. And be back in time for our evening tea. Well, that was a very, very paperful day. We managed to travel through the whole paper forest. And be back right in time for evening tea. You must have learned about this wonder umbrella from that book. Aristotle's only answer to Knock Knock's question was a silent smile, because he knew that for every piece of knowledge obtained from paper books, you always have to add a bit of paperful savvy and a wink of paperful quick-wittedness to make it complete. See you next paper time.
In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. Once upon a time, the friends received a letter from the famous city of Papyrus. It was written by their old acquaintance, La Frog. He asked Aristotle and Knock Knock to visit him and help him sort through a strange incident. It's been a long time, my friends, since we got any word from our friend La Frog. Cool, Ari. Well, what does he say? Knock, it's about some strange incident. Our friend tells us that the cheese reserves have been disappearing mysteriously in the city of Papyrus. The residents are very distressed because they love cheese so much. What a discoloring experience! And what does our friend Le Frog think about it? He's inviting us to Papyrus. He says that only we can solve such complicated paper-fying mysteries. Knock, let's go to Papyrus. Let's roll. Head first to Paperific Adventures. So our friends went on a journey to help out their old acquaintance La Frog and all the Papyrus residents. Monsieur Lafrog told the friends that the Paparisians had hid away all the cheese reserves that were left in order to protect them from the mysterious thief. Isn't it a paperific idea to collect all the cheese in one place? This is the perfect bait for a thief. Thumbs up, Lafrog. Now, we'll track down that criminal without a doubt. Am I right, Ari? Probably yes, my friend. Most probably we will. To our friend's surprise, the warehouse was completely empty. Not a piece of cheese had been left on the shelves. I don't get it. The lock is intact, but the warehouse is empty as a drum. This is absolutely not paperful. We need to give it a close look over. Perhaps the thief has left a clue. Great job, LaFrog. You found the dugout trench the thief used to take away all the cheese. No, this is not a simple trench, my friends. This is a hole's mole. I mean a mole's hole. Ari, are you confusing that with something else? Moles don't eat cheese. Everybody knows that. Mice are cheese eaters. Maybe that's a special mole. I think we should track him down and interrogate him about everything. But how will we find him, given that his hole is too narrow and too dark? Oh, we should wait and just sit here until he comes over. We're not going to do that. I know how to draw him out. We should use a little bit of cheese as some paperlicious bait. Bingo! But there's no cheese anymore. It's okay, my friend. We can make up some of our own. Hooray! A paperific idea! So, let's make some cheese. We'll need glue and yellow colored paper. Cut out a long, broad strip of paper. And now make two folds. Glue the obtained triangle together. Then, with scissors, cut out strips of different length and width and roll them into rings using a pencil. Glue these rings together. Now glue the rings into the triangle and you'll get holes for your cheese. I mean, you'll get cheese holes. Your cheese is ready. Good afternoon. Whoa, this is a mouse or a mole. No, it's a mouse or a mole. Oh, I don't get it. Knock, it's not a mole or a mouse. It's a mole mouse. A true rarity. Now it was clear who'd been seeking out all the cheese in Papyrus. LaFrog, would you mind if we took the Mole Mouse back with us to the paper forest? Because over there, we have so much space, he could dig himself the deepest and longest holes. And in order to make him happy, from time to time, Knock and I will give him some cheese. Homemade cheese. The friends said goodbye to LaFrog and headed home. So this story folded up very paperfully. Cheese stopped disappearing in the city of Papyrus, and Knock Knock, with Aristotle, acquired themselves a new extraordinary friend. <laughs>
See you next paper time. In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. One day, after a heavy summer rain in the paper forest, the friends came outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Oh, Ari, this rain was perfect. I think today's gonna be a great time to go mushrooming. You are absolutely right, my friend. Warm summer rain is sometimes named mushroom rain for a reason. Because after it, so many new mushrooms pop up in the forest. The friends were so carried away with mushrooming that they didn't notice what had appeared right in front of them. It's strange, Ari. No later than yesterday, I was flying past here and saw nothing except for leaves on this tree. It's the first time in my life I've seen shoes growing on trees out of the blue. He was right. Normally in Paperland, there were leaves, apples, or at least cones growing on trees, but not for a moment shoes. Huh, knock, of course, everything has a reason. Remember what happened recently in our paper forest? We had a mushroom rain, but what does that have anything to do with it? It does, because probably it wasn't a mushroom rain, but a shoes rain. A shoes rain? Of course, Ari. Why didn't I think of that? That's why no mushrooms popped up, but shoes. Oh, wow. How paperful. Knock, we have to make sure to take a photo of this rare occurrence. Of course, Ari. Otherwise, who would believe us? So the friends rushed home for the camera. Yup, Knock. We can't waste a minute. This event is so important. We have to record it immediately. I don't understand it, Knock. Just before, the branches were heavy with shoes hanging on. And where are they now, huh? Maybe someone else has found them. Huh. Oh, Ari, this is so... Unpaperful. Ari, I think I found out why all the shoes have disappeared. Here's the reason right here. The centipede. Let's glue five or six cardboard rings together of equal size. Glue some colored paper over them or paint them. Cut a long strip of paper and put the colored rings on it. The last ring needs to be glued. For legs, let's cut short strips out of paper and fold them into bellows. To make a head, roll a paper strip into a ring and glue it to the outermost ring horizontally. Now, draw a face, eyes, and a smile. And let's glue on a little mustache. Your centipede is ready. Indeed, all the shoes were now on the centipede's feet and it was walking around in them with delight. Excuse me, Mr. Centipede. The problem is that you've collected all the shoes off the tree before we even had a chance to photograph them. And now we'll have to wait for a long time before the next shoe rain comes along. The centipede told the friends that the rain was not a shoe rain, but a regular one. It was caught in the rain, and its feet got all wet, so it had to hang out all its shoes to dry them. What do we do now? Ari! I guess, my friend, it's time for us to go mushrooming. Well, that's true, Ari, because shoe rains haven't been proven true yet. But mushroom rains we know surely exist. Aristotle and Knock Knock invited the centipede to go mushrooming together because 40 legs would not be useless in a matter like this. And the three of them together cropped such a harvest that they decided to bake pies and call in some guests. Thus, everything folded up very paperfully this time as well. However, one question kept bothering our friends. When would at last the true shoe rain fall? 
See you next paper time. In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. Sometimes, when there were calm and peaceful days, our friends loved to just play a game of chess. But on this day, something went awry. Excuse me, Amalia. Would you mind not singing so loud, please? What's this performance in our yard? Well, I'm afraid, my friend, that we wouldn't be able to guess the truth ourselves. So, let's just ask Amalia what this paper talent show is all about. She-Bear Amalia told Ari and Nock that she had a cherished dream, to become a star. That's why she was always showing off her talents whenever and wherever she was. Well, that dream is definitely worth dreaming about. Yep. A pretty good dream, but the way to it is a little wrong, not paperful enough. Then Amalia asked Nock and Ari to give her a clue on how to achieve her dream and how she could become a real star. Oh dear, I'll have to think this through paperfully. Well, of course. It's as easy as a piece of paper. Ari, what have you thought up? Come on, tell us! I think to become a real star, you simply have to ask a real star for advice. They know the right answer for sure. But how can we ask them? They're so high up! That's right, Nock. So, our plan will be to craft a paper rocket that will fly her right to where the stars live. Hooray! How to build a paper rocket. We'll need colored paper, scissors, and glue. Make a cone from one piece of colored paper and a pipe from another. Now, let's glue the two together. There it is. Now, cut a circle out of one of the pieces of paper and glue it on the rocket to make a window. There you go, amazing. And now, cut the yellow paper into strips and curl them using a pencil. Glue the fire-like strips to the bottom of your rocket and your rocket is ready for takeoff. Goodbye, Amalia. I hope the stars give you good advice and help you make your dreams come true. So long, Amalia. Hey, look, Aristotle. Some constellation is incredibly bright tonight. What could it be? Knock. This is not just a constellation. This is the Big Dipper. And look how incredibly lively it's shining. Well, now it's the Great Bear Amalia constellation. So it must mean that the stars told her the way to become a real star. How brilliant, Nock. You know, Ari, if the stars were too many, the sky couldn't contain all of them. This is exactly why I prefer staying down here, in Paperland, my friend. Thus, Amalia's dream came true, and it got to shine in the sky. But Aristotle and Knock Knock chose to stay in the paper forest, where many wonderful adventures were waiting to unfold. Because all things in their own good time and in their own good place.
See you next paper time. In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. Once upon a time, on New Year's Eve, the friends were up to traveling to the other side of the earth, the dark paper land. Knock, what a postcard idea it is to go see the new year in the far away dark paper land. Yup, Ari, a pay perfect idea. Just imagine, sea, sun, and sand. And most importantly, no snow at all. Exactly, not a trace of snow. New Year in the dark paper land is just unbelievable. Is it really possible, Ari? Of course it is, Nock, because all wishes come true on New Year's Day. So the friends went to the distant dark paper land to see the new year on a warm seashore far from snowfalls and blizzards. Down there in the dark paper land, their old acquaintance Mumba met them. Happy New Year to you, Mumba! I wish you, Mumba, a very happy new paper day. Mumba did not understand what Aristotle and Knock Knock were talking about. Nobody in this land had a clue what New Year's Eve was and never celebrated it since in the dark paper land, summer was year round and winter never, never came. What? You don't know what New Year's is? This is the best holiday under the sun. The most paperful holiday. So the friends told Mumba about the New Year's tree, winter, snow, and how to make a snowman, playing snowball fights and going skiing, skating, and tobogganing. And the most important is that on New Year's, all one's dearest wishes do come true. Mumba got very upset because he had a dearest wish. But since New Year's Day never occurs in his motherland, his wish would never come true. What should we do? Don't be sad, Mumba. We're gonna put up a real New Year's Day right here in Dark Paper Land. And so your wish will definitely come true. Hooray! A real New Year's Day! But Ari, there's nothing New Year-ish around us. Not a thing! Exactly, my friend. There isn't anything. So we'll make it all ourselves. Although, it will make us sweat at least a little bit. So the friends got down to work. They planned to put up a true New Year's Day because they didn't want their friend Mumba to feel down. Okay, it looks pretty similar now. Yes, Nock, it really does. But something is still missing here. I got it, Ari. The snow is missing. We need some real snow here. Of course, Nock. Snow consists of many, many small snowflakes. They are exactly what we need. We'll need white, silver, and blue paper and scissors. Take a square piece of the paper, but don't make it too thick. Fold it into two like a triangle. Fold the obtained triangle the same way three more times. Now, cut out the various figures and patterns on each side of the triangle. Very good. Your snowflake is ready. Now we have the real winter and the real New Year. Hooray! Happy New Year, Ari. Happy New Year, Mumba. A true picture postcard New Year. Happy New Year, Mumba. Happy New Year, Nock. Mumba's dearest wish was to see real snow, which he had never seen in the dark paper land. And this wish came true, because if you do it all paperfully, wishes come true anywhere on Earth. And whether this is the dark paper land or some other land, it makes no difference. 
See you next paper time. In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. However paperful, the summer in paper forest can't last forever. It always gives way to the fall. This time, it was just as it used to be. Look here, my friend. What do you see? Well, I see that our calendar is twice as thin as it was. And on top of that, I see that the fall has come. Look, Knock, what wonderful ripe apples we have in our garden. Time to reap the harvest. Well, how didn't I think of that? Ari, that means that all winter we'll be enjoying apple compote, apple jelly, and apple pies. How paperful. The friends picked up the baskets and darted outside at a moment's notice. Hurry up, my friend. The quicker we collect them, the earlier we'll have the compote and all the stuff on our table. I'm going as fast as I can. Together, Ari and Nock quickly collected full baskets of apples and hurried home to cook up a whole pan of delicious apple compote. Ari, either September has come too early this year, or the apples have been maturing for too long, but the compote is totally sour. No, September is right on time. But... We have collected some very strange apples, I think. You see, all the apples were of the same color, and which of them were sour and which of them were sweet was not so easy to figure out. Well, it seems absolutely clear, my friend, that a sweet apple looks almost identical to a sour one. There's really no difference at all. But... If the apples don't look different from the outside, maybe they're different on the inside? On the inside? Yes, yeah, Ari, from the inside. That means how they taste. How paperful, Knock. I've come up with an invention. Let's hurry outside. Now, we're going to check each and every apple by testing it ourselves. And we'll only take the sweetest ones. Oh, how paperful it is, Ari. Right. Everyone was so diligently looking for sweet apples that they were all worn out, and no one was able to cook the compote afterwards. Aristotle, I had no idea that reaping a harvest would be so much work. We need an identifier of sweet apples, because up until now, we've just been wasting the harvest. If it goes on like this, we're going to be left with no winter stock of apples. Ah, what a sweet apple this is. It seems like the worm knew that the apple would be sweet, so he crawled inside to relish it. That's right, Knock. The worms always find sweet apples without fail. So we'll ask him to help us this way. Get a wide strip of colored paper, scissors, glue, and a piece of green paper. Cut four equally wide strips out of the colored paper. Glue them into pairs on the backside. Glue the other strips into a corner and fold them as bellows. Cut out and glue on the eyes and a green leaf. Your worm is ready. Aristotle and Nock asked the worm to help them find sweet apples, because worms have this talent inherently. Wow, Ari! Look how many apples we've managed to collect! No winter at all could make us scared with this stock! Thanks to the worm's extraordinary talent, Aristotle and Nock Nock were enjoying the magnificent sweet apple compote for the entire winter, as well as apple pies and apple marmalade. And of course, they always treated the worm to them as well. Because if you help someone once, someone will help you someday too. This is the way things are in Paperland, but not only there.
See you next paper time. In one particularly papery land, there lived a moose named Aristotle and a woodpecker named Knock Knock. One day, when our friends were sitting there enjoying a lovely ink tea, a super heavy rain began to pour all of a sudden. Ah! What should we do? Our paper clothes are drying outdoors! Aristotle and Knock Knock hurried to save their clothes from the rain and did so just in time. We gotta shut the door, Ari! Quick! Knock! Are you really that afraid of thunder? No, Ari! But some stranger could get into our house! But Knock, strangers don't rove around getting into someone else's house when it's raining so heavy. Huh! He's already here! Who? The stranger! These are his tracks! Hmm, traces indeed. They lead from the outside. Hello, valued stranger. Where are you? He's hiding from us. Well, the traces lead right to the closet. Maybe he's hiding in the closet. Aha! Uh -huh. I gotcha! We're gonna track you down, stranger. Here you are, stranger. No, not here. Come on out right now! Oh, not here either. Where are you hiding? Look, Knock. There's a lot more traces now. Uh-oh! The traces are getting more and more, but we can't find the stranger anywhere. What's it supposed to mean? Ari, it means this is an invisible creature, or, or a seeing creature. Either way, come on out right now. We're going to find you. Invisible creature, where are you? Well, Knock, maybe he's already gone. Right, Ari. He's gone through the window, and he's hiding outside. Stop! You can't get away from me. Hooray! Invisible being, where are you? Where are you hiding? Hey! Hmm. It's worth knowing that paper woodpeckers absolutely can't fly with their wings soaked. Every wing beat takes them closer and closer to the ground. Who's there? It's me, Knock! Come in, my friend. Hurry! I didn't catch the invisible... I don't know where he's gone. Uh, it's so unpaperful. Hmm. I'll have to think this over in a paperful way. Maybe you know already that whenever Aristotle pondered on a problem, he always played his double bass. Knock! I think I got it. There's no invisible being around here. These are actually our tracks. But I don't understand why they're appearing today. Because, Knock, it's raining outside today. And there's no doormat anywhere near our door. Well, let's make one up as quick as we can. Sure, Knock. Hooray! How paperful. So, let's take two colored pieces of paper and cut them into thin strips without getting all the way to the edge. That's it. Very good. Now unfold one sheet crosswise and start braiding it into the other. That's right. The strip should be above and below, forming a checkerboard. Amazing. Our doormat is finally ready. Great! Now, wiping my feet before coming in is one of my favorite things. It's mine too, Knock. In this way, our story folded up in a very paperful way. And it goes without saying, from then on, the Invisible Man didn't call into the friend's house. Needless to say, 
See you next paper time.